This is the Dell Dimension 3000s. because it's been doing this really weird hum sound and I don't want to get too into it. And here comes the Duchess. Come on. Yep. Here's my sidekick in command, my cat. And here, let me move some stuff for you. Here. Go. Look yourself over here, please. Alright, so... You're in the way, cat. Come on. This way. Thank you. Um, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be talking about Video card heatsink replacement. This is a NVIDIA GT610 right here, and we've got an a ATI or AMD Radeon card. Uh, I think it's like an HD3000 card, and then ASUS GT610. Uh, these heatsinks are made strictly for quiet running, and good. they're very nice to lead design. Look at that. Look how cool that is. Anyhow, these heatsinks are nice and all, but they do not fit in low-profile solution cases. So what I want to do is I want to make, I've done this before, I've successfully gotten away with it, is take off this NVIDIA or this ATI Radeon cooler and put it onto this NVIDIA card. Now, this is doable, it's very, it's doable, I've done it before, but it's not ideal because it makes these things run kind of toasty. But, uh, let's get on with it, shall we? Okay, so when you're doing this, you've got to unscrew this. Now... I don't have a screwdriver that small with me at the moment, so I'm going to be using a knife. Not a recommended idea, okay? Never use something like this because obviously you know what's going to happen. You could honestly cut yourself, really hurt something in your body, blah, 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 blah so on. You know the, uh, the nagging on this. What we got to do is we got to unscrew these here. And we'll look at temps and stuff at this because whenever you're replacing a heatsink, and any kind of video card, you have to watch your temperatures when you do testing on them. You can't just throw them in and say, oh, it works. Because when you do that, you could catastrophically, A, the card would not work, and B, you could cause, like, the card could work, but obviously it would overheat a crap ton of times. You'd have to have a pretty unhappy person, whoever's using the damn card, that uh, keeps dying out on them. That and now let me, let me use my uh, handy cam for this and get a better view. Uh, all right. Oh, wrong angle here. Okay. So now that you can get a better view, we need to just gently pry this off. And now we need to unhook it from here. And there we go. I'm not going to use these cards because these take like the little pigtail. Uh, adapters where it takes one to two VGAs, and I freaking hate those, honestly. I, I just hate the design. It's a piece of crap design it should never have been designed like that, quite frankly. Now, we're going to have a little bit of cooling issues here. Oh, never mind. What we need to do is we need to line this up with the holes you see back there. So let me just go ahead and lay this flat here. Kind of hard to do on video because I don't have a tripod with me. I'm going to lay this down, switch over this input. I'll get it squeezed in here because it's very hard to do this on camera. I did it. Okay. So I've got the uh, card lined up there. Now, we this would plug in into the thing, but the reason why I can't plug it into the, uh, the thing, what I mean by thing is I mean like the actual uh, adapter for it, but the reason why I can't plug it into that is because of the fact that uh, there's no adapter for the fan. It's just something that they did when they made this damn thing. So they never put an adapter in for the fan. I think Asus did that because honestly, I don't think they would. They had the no 
the fanless cooler. And quite frankly, I don't think they intended for people to do replacements like this on them. But there's still a way we can cool that down with that to get power to that fan. We just have to apply a direct 12 volt input. That fan is rated around, I believe, 7 volts, but I don't think it would really matter that much. Like, yes, it's obviously being overvolted a tad, but it's better that than have the damn card run at, like, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which I actually have gone at that hot. I actually experimented with one of these, and I have gotten one of these cards that hot before. So, yeah, you might be wondering, a GT610? It's like the little coolest running card I've ever seen. How can it run so freaking hot? Well, it's possible. Trust me, it's it's very well possible. You might not think of it as possible, but it is. And it will run quite hot. Now we just need to get this screw. Like I said, you probably shouldn't use a knife to screw things in. And whenever you're doing this, make sure you don't tighten them super tight to the point where uh, it's like bending the PCB. Because you could really damage the uh, card like that. There we go. Last screw. There we go. Here is the finished product. See? Ta-da! It's so funny seeing an NVIDIA card with an ATI Radeon logo on it. It really is. I don't know what it is about it. It just always gives me a real big kick when I see it. But uh, as you can see, now we have the ATI little cooler on here. Now what we need to do is, commonly there's a little plug that would be right here for that fan, but uh, obviously being that this is a uh, this is a, a rebranded uh, card, we can't really use that. So we got to find some way to properly get this thing connected to, uh, I guess you could say, 12 volts. So we need to cut the wires here. Pro tip: never use your teeth, but I don't really care. I don't really care, so you should care though. I obviously don't, but uh, you could really hurt your teeth doing that. Damn it. You never want to use your teeth to splice wires. Not good. Alright, there we go. So now what we need to do is we need to get a connector for this to power it off of 12 volts. So I will be right back. Alright, so now we just need to twist these wires on. I'll show you. So next what we need to do is we need to get a wire like that. Now commonly it's best that you use heat shrink tubing. I don't have heat shrink tubing so I'm just going to use a little bit of duct tape because I don't have electrical tape. Alright, so here's our final result. Ghetto but it works. <laughs> And we're obviously going to be plugging this into a, uh, right, hold on, All right, I'll cut that later, but we got to plug this, hook this in, but yeah, so that's what it looks like, and that's how it works, so thanks for watching, comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.